Oh, did I do that question right on the test? Did I wish Emily a happy birthday? I must have. I can't believe I said something so stupid yesterday. What time is it? What if he likes someone else? What if I don't get it? Shit, I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. I'm so not ready for tomorrow's exam. Oh my god. Will I have enough time to go to the gym? I'm gonna gain so much weight. I literally have no time. Wait, what time is it? I'm so stressed. No, it's okay. I can handle it. Shit, it's time to go. I really have to go. Sorry. I hope I don't run into them. Was I not good enough? How could they like someone else? I wonder if they hate me. Um, what time is it? I'm running out of time. I'm running out of energy. I can't do this anymore. I want help. I need help. I'm just so tired. Well, welcome back to school, everyone. I'm seriously not gonna downplay it. Back to school can be very extremely aggressively stressful for our minds and our bodies and our health. I think this past year changed the way I defined health. I thought health was just achieved through hard work and sweat and eating clean. I thought that overworking my body and ignoring my hunger cues and not having the ice cream, that was winning and that was me choosing health. But of course- mm, I like the- Purple ones. I was wrong. The definition of health can change in a day. Work out, eat all your greens, stand up, drink water, sanitize, wash, wipe, gain some muscle, wear a mask, try to change all the things you hate about your body. We can look like completely different people, but we are still not healthy if our minds aren't healthy. Health is not tied to only one thing, one shape, one look, one size, one vaccine, one x-ray, one bad day. We are constantly working towards the idea of health. There's no end goal. Each day, we can only just try our best. And I'm here to remind you that your best is enough. I wrote this a few months ago, and I thought I would share it now. This has been the happiest, most fulfilling, and craziest year of my life. I've learned so much about who I am and what my purpose is in this world. I have found passion and friends and love throughout my journey here on YouTube. I wouldn't give it up for anything. However, along this journey, I've also lost myself a little bit. Actually, I've lost myself completely. I threw my entire heart and soul and being into my videos and into creating. I shared with the world my most vulnerable sides and stories that the people closest with me hadn't even heard. I pulled all-nighter after all-nighter trying to be perfect enough for everyone and for myself. I never really took time to stop and realize how much of a toll it had taken on my physical and mental and emotional well-being. Red beans fire. Yeah. Red is better. Why is no one eating it with me? I'm very happy right now. It's squash and onions. Special spice with cream. Nice. And the chicken. Some pulsed almonds. Ooh, I'm so excited. Ooh, so tender. Mmm. Mmm. The squash. Oh my. Okay. Wow. Tastes like Christmas. <laughs> Tastes like Christmas. <laughs> yeah, and the recipe. Isn't that what you're supposed to do every time? I want to be there for all of you and connect and share and help and grow together and I now realize I can only do that if I'm there for myself first. This isn't goodbye, but I'm just trying to explain why I've been so absent recently. As hard as it is to say, I've decided I will be slowing my upload schedule, posting less frequently, and taking away the pressure to post on social media. And in the meantime, I'll be getting professional help and trying my very best to heal from within, so I'll be taking time for me, traveling, and just really being with myself. I hope you guys can understand. I want to heal so I can come back better and stronger for all of you. And I'm not really healed yet. And I don't know when I will be or what that even really means. And I'm honestly just trying to figure this all out like all of you guys. Please just take this as a reminder to take care of yourself first. Mental health comes first. Self-care is not selfish. And I love you guys so much. And I need to love myself too. I burned out. I burned out hard. The only reason I was making videos is because I didn't want to let the companies down, I didn't want to let any of you guys down, and because of that, I really, really let myself down. And compounded with having to start school again, I didn't know what to do, and that's when I was recommended to get professional help. And that's when I found BetterHelp. It's absolutely even crazy that I'm even saying this, but I want to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. Guys, seriously, if there's something interfering with your happiness, I really know what it's like, and for too long I felt that way too. Too. And I didn't have anyone to turn to because I didn't think anyone would understand. But there's always someone that can help, someone that will listen. 
BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own professional licensed therapist that you can literally start talking to within 48 hours, anytime, anywhere. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online. And BetterHelp has over 20,000 therapists with broad ranges of expertise. While some might not be locally available in certain areas, service is available worldwide. And you can schedule a weekly video or phone session so you never have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room like you would with traditional therapy. They're really committed to matching you with the right therapist for you so they make it really easy and free to change therapists. It's also way more affordable than traditional offline therapy and there's financial aid if you need. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today and honestly I want the same thing for me and all of you too. So visit betterhelp.com sun. That's better H-E-L-P and join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. And use the link in the description to get a special 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com sun. Let's do some share and tell. As I've grown up, I've learned that everyone is the busiest and most stressed and overwhelmed person ever and dealing with 2,000 million things. And what I find is that talking about it makes it better. Talk about your worries, your fears, what is causing your heart to race, what keeps you up at night, what you feel like you can't handle. So I'll go first. I feel like 24 hours is just not enough time in a day. I feel like time spent not being productive is wasted time. I feel like I can never take the advice I give. I know breaks and time off and boundaries are important, but I still feel guilty when I spend time for me and not for future me. I'm trying to keep up with school, be a good friend, stay on track with social events and fashion trends and video ideas and film and edit and script and build relationships and get over past ones. And it doesn't always feel like I'm doing that successfully. I want to grow and grow and learn and grow, but honestly, I just feel like I'm sinking sometimes. It's freaking apple season, guys. I sometimes feel like I'm running away from my fears, from love, from discomfort because I'm scared to mess up. Sometimes I just cry. Sometimes I wish I could go back in time. Sometimes I wish I could stop it. Sometimes I feel like my body could be better, look better, and sometimes I just hate myself. So what do I do when I feel these things? I stop and I just feel it. Stressed, anxious, broken, defeated, hopeless, misunderstood, disappointed, not enough, not smart enough, not pretty enough. But you can resent yourself, how you're feeling, what you did, what you didn't do. You're allowed to feel all those things, but just know you're not going to feel that way forever. But really do sit in those feelings, welcome those feelings, accept them, and learn from them. <laughs> I know we want to run from what makes us upset or uncomfortable. We want to change our pain or our insecurities. We want to bury them and move on. We distract ourselves, cover it up, or just run away. But we can never find our strength if we hide from the exact things that will make us stronger. We can't be afraid to feel. Feeling doesn't make us weak. The choice to feel and cry hysterically and take time off. <sighs> I'm so hungry. And acknowledge how losing something or someone or not meeting expectations hurts us. Accepting that and not fighting it, but instead embracing it, that makes us strong. I've learned to sit in my own discomfort with my less than impressive marks in the absence of people who left me that I thought would never leave and my own reactions and triggers and the fear of giving up the past and the fear of knowing it's time to move forward. We have to learn how to sit in our own skin in sadness and sometimes loss. We have to learn how to sit with ourselves because we have to learn how to lean on ourselves, be there for ourselves in order to accept ourselves. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you. Wow, that's beauty. Wow, I'm so excited to eat this. Ah. Oh my god, that's so good. Holy, the falafel's so fire. How's the food food? Mm, I need another falafel. I love the soup. I love the texture. It's like tapioca. Mm. So whatever it is, a big midterm, a bad breakup, a rejected interview, you are not alone. You have me, you have friends and family, and you have you. And you will always have you. You will survive this. We always do. Sometimes my to-do lists will say, wake up, work out, eat, watch a sad rom-com and cry, write about your feelings and cry, nap, eat again and cry. <laughs> Some days are harder than others, so don't be hard on yourself. Some days, basic tasks, talking, eating, just being you seems impossible. So don't push yourself too hard. Small goals are still goals. All the small wins matter and will take you one step further than before. Sometimes we won't feel happy at first. After one change, one day, even multiple days, no matter how right our actions are. But just start because we have to learn how to choose the behaviors and beliefs and actions that will move our lives forward, not the ones holding us back.
It's hard to make time for something you dread, but it's easy to make time for something that makes you feel strong, alive, happy, energized, more productive, something you do for your body and not in spite of it. Waking up early to go to the gym, scheduling in time to move, gym sessions, yoga classes, stretching, walking, exercising, lifting, running, it has to be for you. It just has to. I love training for results. My results are for me. My results are how strong I look and how tough I feel, how liberated and powerful and dedicated I am. My results are how healthy I feel. And feeling healthy, that's really worth it. The most effective style of training is the one you enjoy. Pick a time that works for you one day a week, four days, every day. Just remember to train to enhance your life, not to take away from it. Mmm, that is so good. Wow. During school, it's really clear to me that what you put in your body, it changes the game. <laughs> Fuel your body in a way that makes you feel like the best you. Eat to feel like you're living and thriving and taking care of yourself. Eating right just means eating for you. I adore falafel. There doesn't have to be any rules if you don't set any. There doesn't have to be any strict boundaries if you just trust that your body will know. There doesn't have to be fear if you practice facing it. For me and how I eat during school, it really just depends on my schedule, my cravings, my friends, the social setting, the stress, the hunger, the amount of time I have. And not every meal is perfect. Not every meal is really even a meal. And that's exactly how I want it to be. Are there other times where I'm just eating out of boredom and stress eating? Yeah, basically every day. And that's honestly okay. We all do it. Sometimes when I'm stress eating, I'll just take a deep breath and realize food will not make me not stressed, but sometimes we need that temporary happiness. If it's not your only stress coping mechanism, and if it's not harming you in any way, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having one too many chips when you're studying for your big test, or running to the fridge for cookie dough in the middle of writing an essay. Eating won't solve my stress or my problems or make the pain go away, but my actions and decisions afterwards will. So don't stress about stress eating, acknowledge you're doing it, own it, realize it's okay, and maybe ask yourself why you're stressed and what you can do other than eating to fix that. Do you get imposter syndrome? I used to. But you just never thought you were good enough? Yeah. I get that every day. Mmm! Okay. It's really tender. Have better time management, write to-do list, prioritize this, make more time for that. Be smarter with your time. Okay, okay, okay. Priorities are important. What I've realized over the years is that you have to be your most important priority. Okay, we hear that all the time, but what's the point of learning stats and bio and stressing and crying because you want to do well and live a good life with a good job? What's the point of that if you forget to live now? I don't know. I think I've just learned to prioritize actually living. The idea of balance is an easy one to grasp, but a hard one to master. Education and school has always been my number one priority, but we can all still prioritize our goals, but have you, as in your well-being, your sanity, your friends and hobbies, your social life, your sleep schedule, your happiness factored in. These numbers and grades do not define you, but the memories you allow yourself to make will shape you. Yeah, so sometimes I literally just make a bowl, eat it in the car. Sometimes I prioritize getting a project done over a party because I know it will make me less anxious and I need a good night's sleep. It's not enough freaking time in the day to eat my oats, you know? Sometimes I prioritize working out over study sessions because I'll feel better and it makes me feel more productive later. Sometimes I prioritize comforting a friend over a video deadline because videos can wait. Time is so valuable, so make sure you're spending it doing what you love and with the people you want to spend it with. And make sure one of those people is yourself. It's actually kind of funny and also kind of sad. Every year my body changes. And I would think of that change as bad. I wanted to revert. I want to go back. I think of how I used to live, how I used to work out, my old meals, my previous body, my better body. But the truth is, health can still be health in different bodies at different weights, with more or less fat on your arms, with more or less gym sessions, with different clothing sizes. We can still embody health. Each year, yeah, my body may resemble a different look of health, but my new version of health also includes the new people in my life, the new relationships I've built, new habits, new priorities, and these new things you gave me half the chicken. have resulted in a new body. But I wouldn't give up my new body for my old one because that would mean giving up prioritizing my friendships over my workouts. <laughs> giving up spontaneous pizza dates to eat perfectly, mm -hmm. giving up my new love for the gym with a strict routine, so good. giving up my new outlook on living life for me and instead for the size of my body. When was the last time? Oh my god, mm, that's so good. Question for you, will changing your body make your life better or will changing the way you value your body make your life better? So good. My body is not worse or less or better. It's hey, simply just different and new, but both are mine. In this body and maybe in some of the other ones from the past, I was happy and healthy. Apples.
really like uncrisp, really mushy. <laughs> now, the only thing that's different is my definition of what happy and healthy looks like. And I think that's a beautiful change that we just need to learn to accept. My friend Healthful Radiance said it best. My body will change again and again during the course of my life. I no longer fear this, but I welcome it. And I hope you can too. Mmm, try the grapes. They're so good, it's so crispy. I know, I know, it's hard. <laughs> it really is to overwork or mindlessly scroll or procrastinate right before bed or just not feel like there aren't enough hours in a day. I'm absolutely the biggest hypocrite, but we need to sleep. <laughs> Please just send an alarm that tells you to stop and go to bed. Don't compare to other people who are sleeping at 3 a.m. or waking up at 4 a.m. You know your body and that's what you need to focus on, not someone else's messed up sleep schedule, okay? I don't want to study anymore. Dry ice. Oh. Dry ice. Oh. It's really dry. It's really dry. I actually can't do this. Shit. It's really good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Very good. Pecans are good. Going into exam prep now. But I thought I deserved some ice cream. Sleep deprived Linda can't focus or work as effectively. She's cranky and anxious. Her workouts are not powerful. She's just all over the place. And she can't live life fully on half a tank of sleep, you know? We aren't machines. We need to recharge in order to be fully ourselves. So just a reminder, take care of yourselves. And that includes sleeping. Even if you don't see it or feel it, you're doing better than you give yourself credit for. This is a good apple. I know, I know. You don't feel like it right now, but even if you have no idea what's going on in class or what your life goals are or who you actually are or love or want, you are truly doing better than you think you are. Never think you're failing. Never think you're falling behind. Never think you're not enough because you are not those things if you're trying your best. Cheesy, but if you continue to show up, fuel your body, even if the results you want aren't showing, even if you make the wrong decisions today, you will be okay tomorrow. You will. <laughs> oh, that was really crazy. Wow. Well. Ouch. You've made terrible, stupid, unfortunate decisions before, right? But you ended up being okay, didn't you? Wow, exciting. Stop apologizing. You are allowed to show your emotions, to need a day off, to cut people out, to not respond, to be hurt, to be authentically you, to love your appearance, to love your intelligence, to love your compassion. Say bye, my you don't need to give your time to anyone else but yourself some days. Say hello! Are you cute? Baby! Oh my god, it smells so good! Don't apologize for being confused, for your opinions, for your pain. I find that we are so used to apologizing for things we should actually be- Oh my gosh, that looks so good. That make us who we are, the things that we do to take care of ourselves. Okay, cheers, women. You know what? I'm so proud of us for getting back up again, even though we thought we couldn't. The thing is, guys, we are so resilient. Hey, this one's I feel like we need a better clip for me. One more time. It is one, two, three. I knew you were going to Cause I don't feel well. Girl, tell me something. Charcoal barbecue. Thanksgiving turkey. What do we have here? Couple turkeys on the charcoal barbecue. Oh my god! We can handle pain, we can endure the struggle, we can get our hearts broken again and again and still love ourselves. Just because you feel broken doesn't mean you are. Oh my god! Oh my god! It is smoky! Sometimes your mind needs to be stronger than your feelings. It doesn't have to be now, it doesn't have to be tomorrow. Give your mind a rest, give your body a break, let your heart melt and shatter and let all the tears pour out. And then, one day, you'll just know what's right for you, what's best for you, who's meant for you. What is supposed to happen will come. I freaking love this like black stuff. Lynn has got it. I'll take one for the team. Perfectly. And even if it hurts so badly right now and you have no idea why you deserved it, healing and growth can always happen. And happiness can always be found. Happy Thanksgiving. Please don't give up just because it's difficult. Don't stop dreaming just because it's unlikely. Don't doubt yourself just because others doubt you. Don't stop fighting for yourself. Don't stop trying if you know in your heart that it's what you want. Even if you don't end up wanting it, at least you won't live wondering what if. So give it your all. This life, this dream, this class, this meal, this challenge, this relationship, yourself. Give it your all. You owe yourself that. Is it recording? Uh, probably. Hello? Hello? It's Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Okay. Linda's not here right now. We're her BFFs. Oh, right.
It's always there. What's we're hoping she's it. editing that she includes this in her YouTube video. <laughs> and she's back here. Cheers. You can't start a new chapter in your life if you continue to reread the last one. The current moment will always be a fresh start. <laughs> so good. Oh, so good. Oh my god. I know, looks are deceiving. Okay, what? Like, looks are deceiving. Like, it looks good, but then when you eat it, it's, it's even better. better. Oh, crap, you have to. Oh my god, that is so good. Hey, my mom. Let's go, Milo. Sounds really confused. Hands look like salmon. <laughs> Simple question. Do you love you? Beautiful day today. Okay, now, would you still love you if you lost your friends? Would you love yourself if you couldn't hide what you believe to be your flaws? Do you love yourself enough to be lonely and okay? Would you still think you're beautiful if no one ever told you that again? Would you be resilient even if your voice was the only one telling you that you could do it? Could you still love yourself if the person that loved you the most started loving someone else? The answer should be yes, but it's hard. I hate that it is, but it just is. Because you should love yourself more than anyone else can love you. Relying on others to provide me the love and care that I should be giving myself will always leave me empty. Relying on relationships to make me feel worthy will only leave me feeling worthless. Relying on men to validate me as a woman, as a person, only means that I will never be whole and I will never be happy with who I am if I allow other people to determine if I should be. Stop thinking you always need to be with somebody else to feel love. Love yourself enough. Enough that you can wake up every day and be simply okay, even if it's just you. Happy Thanksgiving! Lowest door. I'm gonna get a mark a margarita. <laughs> Meeting a video? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, get in on this. Frick, I love the salmon here. <laughs> Growing up, older students and parents and siblings always told me life was only gonna get busier and harder and more stressful, and they weren't kidding. Blow out your imaginary candle. Life, school, jobs, money, relationships, they get freaking complicated. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't have to do it alone. Reach out, talk, connect, catch up, take breaks, break down, be not okay when you're not okay, cry when your heart gets broken, scream when you get rejected, be frustrated when your mind criticizes your body. Don't be afraid to feel. Milo! <laughs> As my friend Drew said to me the other day while I was hysterically crying, you got this man. You always do. The stars will align and everything will be okay. You have the gym, oatmeal, friends, family, school, treats, adventures, and the list goes on. All your feelings are valid. You are so strong. So please don't tell yourself anything different. Take care of yourself because at the end of the day, it's just gonna be you and your mind. So be gentle with yourself. I've also heard that sleep is important. I don't know, maybe sleeping is stupid. Okay, I will stop. Here for you always. Have a margarita for me. Love you, man. Numbers do not define you. Your feelings are valid. Your pain is real. You are strong enough. You will survive this. And you are exactly where you need to be.